All right, man. The Charlo uh, Castano's numbers came out expeditiously, came out fast as hell. They never released the Luba numbers for whatever reason it was. But um, let's get into it. Since Charlo Castano's peaked at 832,000 832, viewers, Showtime's most watched fight in nearly three years. Now, um, Steven Espinosa claims there's no such thing as peak. Excuse me, but his company, which, you know, both are under the Viacom or Viacom um, uh, umbrella, they keep reporting a peak, right? And that's fine. It is what it is. It's, you know, the point where the people watched it, you know, the hot, the, the point where the viewership peaked at one point. I, I mean, probably means nothing, probably means something. It is what it is, but. You know, it's, the, it's just, you know, most fighting, you know, most watched fighting nearly three years. You know, even though they was giving away tickets, it's because, you know, this fight should have been at the Barclays Centers. That's the honest truth. This fight should have been at the Barclays Centers. And they dropped the ball on this fight being at the Barclays Centers. Right? It was. No matter if the original was in Texas, they should have went to the Barclays Centers. And the Barclays Centers, the people would have just came. They always come. It's just boxing has become routine at the Barclays Centers, the PBC, and people going to come regardless. And they, they would have put 10,000 minimum in, in that arena, and more people would have came, but they chose not to. But then again, let's keep going on. It says Jamel Charlo and Brian Castanos drew a Showtime audience for live boxing. So th through the biggest audience for live boxing in nearly three years, Saturday night. It says Nielsen Media Research released figures Tuesday that indicated an average audience of 756,000 watched the Fantastic Fight of the Year candidate. Showtime audience peaked at 832,000 during 154-pound title unification. Well, undisputed, I'm going to say rematch. It was in the undisputed rematch. Yeah, Charlo won by 10th round, knock out the Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California. Now, before we get into what was the next one, um, like, I, like I said before, it's was a fighter of the year candidate. I can't even remember the other fighter of the years that have been. I know it was, you know, Lubin and Fondor. Uh, I'm going to get an edge to Charlo. And I'm going to tell you why I'm going to be biased here because <laughs> the brother lost him versus Fondor. And for one, they never reported the Lubin and Fondor n n numbers. And you see how quick they reported these numbers. So Showtime talking about we don't release numbers. You know, people say, well, this is Nielsen Media Research. Nielsen Media Research never released the number for. Lubin and Fondor. So obviously Viacom, Showtime, whatever you want to call. If you didn't know, boxing was owned by Viacom too, or Viacom, whatever you want to say. But obviously they control how they get and when they get out and when they don't get out, even if it's Nelson Media or they pay review numbers. So how quick they got the numbers together. So this lets you know for future references when they taking on taking late with the money or taking late with the with the uh with the numbers, they're not good at all. And at the end of the day, this is great for Showtime, you know, and this would be a great number for for ESPN top rank, I guess, in the digital era. But for for HBO, this wasn't a, it wouldn't have been a great number. I mean, they was they was a, if they came back tomorrow, HBO first event, no matter if it was shit versus P, it would you know it would it would blow these numbers out the water. Even though they've been out the game for so long, you know what I'm saying? It's just a synonymous. It was just so dominant for so long. It's synonymous brand. Boxing, but they wouldn't do the numbers that they used to do five to ten million viewerships per you know fight card that came on regular ES on regular HBO or fight boxing after dark or championship boxing. You know, Showtime has never had the juice like that, they still don't have a subscriber base that Showtime that HBO got. But it, them days are long gone with piracy and streaming, so you know, they long gone regardless of who come back. I mean, people even streaming on TV, you know, TV not even doing a number doing, doing those numbers that a premium network was doing. Five to ten million at their peak. That's what they was doing in viewership for cards. You know, not even championship cards. So, you know, viewership, you know, piracies change everything. He said those numbers were the highest for Showtime since Deontay Water knocked out, uh, knockout of uh, Dominic Brazil made in 2019 at the Barclays Center's Water spectacular stoppage of Brazil attracted an audience, average audience of 795,000 on Showtime's linear channel. Compound average viewership of 886,000 on Showtime's linear channel streaming services. Now, you think why this fight wasn't on CBS, but you got to think about it too with CBS. CBS, like Lion Killer told me, it's like 
everything is about CBS screams, Arthur Riders and old, even a theme song for college football is old, even a presentation other than Tony Romo, Dan Fouts, it's all like old school. And CBS need to get with the new school. They need to put boxing on there. They'll do better number. I mean, I don't know what show who watch CBS and you only watch for SEC football. I only watch basketball as a tournament. But uh there wasn't a time for audience to grow because Wilder just needed two minutes and 17 seconds to knock out uh Brazil, who was a mandatory challenger for the Wilder's WC heavyweight title. Streaming viewerships for Charlo Castano's one rematch wasn't available as a Tuesday afternoon. Paramount Global and the parent company of Showtime. And boxing.com, I guess that's what they call them by account now, doesn't typically release streaming numbers, which were tracked or not tracked by Nielsen. Never left the viewership Saturday night, easily surpassed HBO, Showtime's most watched main event of 2021. The controversial 12 round split decision of Charlo Castano's uh, last July 17th from ATT Center in San Antonio. The first fight drew an average uh, viewership of 422,000, a peak of 536,000. So so I was wrong. In the rematch, they did get closer to them Terrence Crawford and Dongo numbers, but trick no good, but they are on the close platform. So um, big numbers for Charlo. You know, I, I got confirmed that he did make $10 million, which, like I said before, why would he lie about making $10 million? Um, he did make 10 and they said with incentives and endorsements and bonuses in his contract, he made 10 But, you know, like I said before, it's no, it's no reason – to Terrence Crawford for settle or Earl Spence to settle anything less than 15 apiece. There's no reason for that. They're giving Charlo 10 million, and you can't, you know, no offense to him, you can't justify that in viewership still. You can't justify that in in ticket sales. But then again, he was in a market that he's not popular in. So I mean, he's not a he's not a California person in California. You know, now if he was Mexican, the motherfucker probably would have did two million viewerships on Showtime, but he wasn't. That's the fact. You need a black and Mexican in Southern California, and that would have sold. So, you know, big numbers for him, man. I know he's happy with those. You know, his birthday coming up. You know, his brother slapping reporters and shit, pressing reporters. You know, he said he hoped Fred catch HIV. <laughs> so I heard he's pressing LDBC people. Like I got said before, man. It is what it is. You know, he came out. You supported supported him, and you know, you get smacked. <laughs> Or he pressed you and tell you. At least, at least he didn't smack the brothers, bro. At least he didn't smack. Not in my knowledge. I heard he had something against the LDBC. I don't know why. I guess because his brother. When they did that. When they, when he, you know, kind of, kind of. Like, he got, I can't really say he sneaked this. And, but it sound better when you say sneak this. And when he had made that comment with Ellie said back. And they always getting at him and stuff. So I guess that's where the beef at. But like I said before, it is what it is. You know. Either, you know, you're going to, you know, old boy should sue. Just straight up and down. You know, not only do you sue the fighter, you can sue the venue. They got insurance policies. But um, like I said, it is what it is. Great fight. You know, Jamil Charlo, we'll see what happens next. But um, let me know what you girls and guys think. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, that subscribe button, hit the bell icon button, hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live, we drop a video. Financially, you want to support the channel, cash app. Dollar sign CJ Good 313 Venmo CJ Good 313 PayPal link description. Best way to donate to the channel. Stones up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, subscribe button, it's the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live, we'll drop the video. And you know, outside of that, man, um, just hit my link tree up. You can find me everywhere from YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. It's the first link in the description. Let me know what you think in the comment section. One time for one time. The fellow TV piece.